Welcome, everybody, to the Four Tales Podcast. I'm your host, Kyron Silva, and as you can tell, no Danny. Yeah, Danny, unfortunately, had an issue this morning. Um, he's hoping to join us later on, and that'd be great if he can't, you know, understand, Danny, take care of your family, de- your family needs. But in the meantime, thank you for anybody that is joining this live stream. Uh, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, something called Trove. Uh, There's like a bunch of other things I signed us up for. So if you're on any of those platforms, thank you for joining us. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification button because all those interactions help us reach out to other people. But definitely join us in the chat because I think we're going to have a good show today. We have an amazing writer and editor and overall great person, I have to say. But before we bring that person in, I do want to say that um, I have to apologize for our last episode. Uh, if you notice, if you don't watch us live streaming, you just listen to us on Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, uh, Spotify, and all those podcasting networks, you might have noticed that it did not launch until really late last night, and that was all my fault. Um, yeah, there's this little button that you have to hit on Anchor, which is our primary use of podcasting, called Submit. And I never hit the submit button. Um, so it wasn't until I was prepping for today's show and I realized, hey, there's no episode that we did, which was a great episode with uh, Greg last week. And I was like, oh, so I had to go back in, checked it and submitted it. And it's up and ready. So if you're listening to us, please go back, go check it out. It was a great episode with uh, Danny, I and Greg, where we talked about Sierra Nova Comics. And if you happen to be on Spotify, and I think it only works on the Spotify mobile app, but if you happen to be on Spotify, there is a feature now where you, there is a poll feature up on their app. So uh, today's poll is, are you going to go watch the Venom 2 movie? There also is a little bit of a question and answer feature, just asking what comics you read this past week. So if you use Spotify, please hop on and go ahead, answer those questions Help us out. We just want to see if this is something that you guys might like. Um, I know Apple iTunes is our primary use of uh, our most of our users are from Apple iTunes, Apple uh, podcast. But if you do happen to have Spotify, please go on, check it out. Let us know what you like. Second change that you're going to actually notice going forward is I'm going to start dropping our episodes on Saturdays. Um, Right after we do a live stream, I'm going to do a little bit of editing and then, bam, I'm just going to post it up on all the podcasting platforms just because uh, I figure if I'm doing a live stream, might as well just send it up right afterwards for anybody else that wants to listen. So there you go. You're going to get more episodes or not more, but the four tales podcast faster than you were before. Hopefully you enjoy it. If not, Hey, um, but there will be a new poll question and new Q and a service when this episode drops, but since I've gotten all that out of the way, and since I don't have Danny to talk to, I need to talk to somebody to make this an interesting show. I can't just talk to myself. So let's bring in our guest. Um, she is a writer, like I mentioned, and editor. She's written multiple books, including Rain, Sarah's Journal, um, Inner Turmoil, Forever Endings, uh, April's Army, and Tales from the Toy Store. Uh, she now currently has a, a Kickstarter going, and it's going pretty good, so we want to make sure you guys check that out, but it's called Return to the Toy Story, so we're going to assume that's the second part, you know, but you know, we don't assume too much on this show, because I mess up when I assume things. Uh, but we are going to bring in Rowdy, Katrina Royce. Oh, who, who brought cat. a cat with her, apparently. It only fits. You have a cat. 
Your name's Katrina. I mean, that only fits, right? <laughs> All right, right. What, wait, Matt. wait, what's the cast name? Mackinac Mackenzie McMuffin the third. That is way too many M's. <laughs> <laughs> it is. He goes by Mac. <laughs> I, I, I hope so. All right. Mackinac McKenzie Mc, McCracken McMuffin. McMuffin the third. I was and about to say of, McCracken. A, a friend of mine calls him Mackinac McKenzie McMuffin the third DDS. Because he just thinks it needs like a some doctor. official. As a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> DDS. I'm like. Like, I'm not letting the cat work on my teeth, but yeah. sure. Have you not seen Ratatouille? It might be a good thing. I have. That's true. Uh, it could be a good thing. You never know. <laughs> but anyways, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm sorry you. Danny couldn't be here. He Hopefully he'll join us later on, but, you know, we don't yeah. really need him anyways. Eh. <laughs> so for right now, tell us about yourself, uh, what you do, how you do it, you know, things like that. All right. Well, I am Katrina Rotes. I... Uh, run Cat Scratch Press, which is uh, just basically publishes my books. <laughs> I know and, about that. You know, Taurus yeah. Comics only publishes and, my uh, books. So. And uh, also the editing. We have an editing wing, which I, you know, I'm do. It's me. Okay. So Cat Scratch Press is basically me. <laughs> nice. Okay. But I have to, I have to say, I, I heard your questions. No, I'm not going to go see Venom. And what did I read this week? Look. I can't see that. Let's let's enhance <laughs> your a little it. bigger. Yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just I I read one while I was on in Canada. Oh, okay. And uh, read two this last week and cleaned my living room and found three yesterday. <laughs> so I wow. Like, I can find. <laughs> yeah, they weren't read. Bam, bam, bam. But you know, I'm getting a good once a week reading in. <laughs> All right. So we didn't talk about this in the pre-show thing. So what were you doing in Canada? I actually went to Canada for my birthday. Um, Happy birthday. Thank you. My best friend lives in uh, St. Catharines, Ontario. Okay. And no idea so where that is, but okay. It is just outside <laughs> Niagara Falls. Oh, okay. Um, so I went over there for four days and uh, spent some time with him and some time writing. Now, you seem to do a lot of traveling, at least to me. It seems uh, like you do a lot. It. I usually once or twice a year, if mm -hmm. I can. Um, this is the first time I've gone anywhere in probably almost two years, though. Okay. Yeah. Understandable. I mean. And uh, it was, I, I warn people, if you're going, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. I'm pretty sure it's worse now. It It's not, it used to be, you know, you kind of would just drive up to the border, like show them your passport or with me, because I'm in Michigan, we have the expanded license. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, hand it to them, ask, answer a few questions and you're on your way. Uh, now you have to have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of travel. There's an app you have to fill out, which includes mm. taking pictures of your vaccine cards. Wow. Um, you have to, you know, have to assure them in the in the app that uh, if you do have to quarantine in Canada for some reason, you have a place to do that. Here's the address of where you can do that. Mm. And, and you can't fill out any of the app within <clears throat> 72 hours before travel. So you okay. can't. You can't pre-fill anything else, anything out. You have to wait until right before you go and then fill everything out and then show all that, show all that at the border. And Wow. And I, you know, I get it. It is for our safety and we mm -hmm. definitely want to make sure by staying as safe as possible while still enjoying Absolutely. the things we want to enjoy. Um, so I totally get that, but you know, let's not talk too much, I guess, about the negatives. <laughs> let's about talk the negatives. about you. It was, it was fun. I had a great time. Okay. Um, you know, was a little worried they weren't going to let me back in the country. <laughs> what did you do to not get back in the country? Not even anything. I just, I pulled up to the, you know, the entry point, handed okay. him my license so they could scan it. He said, where were you at? I told him. And then it was, I sat there. It was like total silence for like two or three minutes. <laughs> and I was, you know, it's that kind of awkward, like, please were let they... me in. Were they running your information in. or? Well, I mean, he scans my license, but I thought there's nothing on there that should red flag that would not allow me to go home Are that I sure? know about, that I know about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pretending like, to be me, you know, and having more fun than me. Uh, at least give like, me a heads uh, up. <laughs> she's got like three pages worth of warrants here. Should I arrest her? <laughs> One of those is for aggravated assault and violence. And... <laughs> Against a border guard? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. It was just the most awkward thing, you know, and I'm, I'm, you can see kind of because the booths are all windows. So mm -hmm. you can see it. And I'm trying to see like his screen and see if there's something on the screen. I'm like, and he finally just goes, okay, you can go. I'm like, wow. 
what was all that about? <laughs> like, yeah, why seriously. am I sitting here so long? Maybe it was I, just I a delay he, in their system. Well, I think he was just bored, to be honest. Okay. I mean, there's not a lot of people going back and forth across the border right now. I mean, usually I've come across and I've been in lines of like 10 or 12 cars. This so time with, there were two cars ahead of me. So, so I think he was just bored. <laughs> you found the one lonely border patrol guard. guard and he was basically checking you out. <laughs> and he was trying to he was trying to think of the nerves to figure out how to hit on you without you know being unprofessional. Without because being of, unprofessional and finally just gave up and went, Yeah, yeah. you can go. <laughs> yeah. I he's like, I don't have the courage. Just go. Just nah, go. Just just go. <laughs> well, at least now you have another story that you can Maybe right into the third volume of the Toy Story yeah, series. Yes, yeah, one, one of them goes across <laughs> into Canada and isn't sure they're going to be allowed back in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, let's talk, okay. Let's talk about the Toy Story series. How did sure. that come about? Toy Story. Uh, I said Toy Story. I, you know what? I actually have accidentally called it Toy Story myself. And uh, I'm like, don't do that. I do not need Disney coming after me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm looking at the Kickstarter page right now, which mm-hmm. you're you're on uh, your eighth day. Yeah, uh, twenty-two yeah. more pages. There's twenty-two more days to go. Yep, and you're doing pretty good. And I'm looking at it really, literally, just looking at Toy Store, and for some reason, Toy Story pops out. Toy Story. Yeah. I actually, uh, on my laptop, when I was writing the first book, actually accidentally titled the folder "Tales from the Toy Story." Oh. And then I had to go in and been... then had to go in and change the. I mean, just was the folder name. It wasn't like the title or anything of the book. But I went. Ugh. Yeah, but if you somehow throw in like folder information into a, I don't know, extended cut at director's saying, that right. would be bad. <laughs> Disney's like, excuse me, what are you yeah. calling your book? Oh, yeah. Disney will Nothing. send that cease and desist really quick. Oh, yeah, they're on that. They don't mm-hmm. play. But so- I started with um, the first book is Tales from the Toy Store, and mm-hmm. that's been out well, over a year now. Um, I don't even remember my own release dates. <laughs> But I will it's say I did, I did I did come through my front door at two a.m., so I'm a little bit not hundred percent there yet. I'm not a coffee. You were traveling. I, well, I as I was traveling, I uh, my youngest son is a jazz studies major at, at Michigan State, wow. and they had a concert last night. And then following the concert, everybody wanted pizza, so we went back to his apartment and ordered pizza that didn't show up until like twelve thirty. Oh, good God! So, so we had to eat the pizza. <laughs> And then Fair drive enough. and then drive 40 minutes home afterwards. So it was about my oldest and I walked through the door at like 2 a.m. And I was like, man, I actually have to set an alarm for a Saturday. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to see me at 10 a.m. <laughs> you know, you know, I know that I know that feeling so much. Every other Saturday, I'm up at six o'clock and I don't want to be. Uh, and yeah. it's getting worse now because it's becoming fall, so it's darker in the morning. Like right. I used to be able to actually see sunlight at this time of day, and now it's just barely creeping up right now. Yeah, your body's just like, you're supposed to be sleeping. What are you doing? You know, it might be, but honestly, I wake up at 5.30 on weekdays anyways. Okay. So it's sort of used to it. Yeah. The sucky thing is Sundays when I have to wake up at 6 o'clock for no reason. My body's <laughs> just like, hey, wake up. Good yeah. thing is, is that there is football, at least there. pregame stuff on. Yes. So I'm able to sit down, go downstairs and enjoy that while my wife sleeps. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> um, you tell us it's going to be a day of, of veering off, guys. Eventually, we'll get to back <laughs> to the question about the book. <laughs> I, I'm, you know. Um, but no, okay. So um, originally started, I guess you could say originally started with my kids mm-hmm. back when they were young. Um I was, I'm always a big fan of reading to your kids at bedtime, um, encouraging imagination. And uh, with my kids, though, they got, they got to the point where they didn't want me to read the books. They wanted me to tell them stories. And okay. uh, stories about their toys. Oh. So they, you know, I've got two boys. They would each pick, pick a toy and I'd make up some wild and crazy adventure that they went on. Unfortunately, I never wrote any of these down. <laughs> I, okay. You know, you live in the moment. Yeah. Oh. And you don't think after the moment's over, I should jot that down. Yeah. And, you know, we and you're have, trying to spend time with your kid at that point, right. too. You're not I mean, really it was, focused it on that. Well, and at that point, I wasn't thinking I was going to turn into a writer of kids' stories. Mm-hmm. I was mom. That was my job. Exactly. And uh, fast forward, my kids are now 20 and 21. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. I got, yeah, my kids are. <laughs> I got them both to adulthood and they're not, and they're not absolute jerks. So oh. I figure I, I figure I did. Okay. 
<laughs> Can you tell me some secrets? Because I have an eighteen-year-old and he's a jerk sometimes. A, well, I, I I will say both of mine can be jerks, but um, once they we get to, got to about high school, um, I said to them, I said, you know, we've got two rules in this house and just two rules. Okay. Number one is number one is don't be a dick. That's a good and, rule. And number two is make good choices. I figure if you those cover pretty much any scenario I could come up with. Mm -hmm. And I will actually even now turn and look at there's they start going off. I'll just look at them and go rule number one, guys. <laughs> That's all I got to say to you. Rule number one. <laughs> and you may be adults now, but I'm still not putting up with nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's good parenting there. You just got to tell them that they're doing wrong and they know, okay, you're right, mom. I screwed a, up. A, kind of attitude check. Yeah, yep. that's good. Okay, that yep. I'm, right. I'm being, I'm being and, and I've had them come to me go, I'm sorry for being a dick. <laughs> you know? Fair enough. And uh, I have I have had parents be horrified that, that, that that's how I word that rule. And I'm like, why? They understand it. Yeah. They're adults now. They, they know. I, I look, I'm not using a worse word I could use. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So when you came out with Toy Store, were mm -hmm. they? I mean, I'm pretty sure they were happy for you, but were they surprised that it was sort of based off of your interactions with them in a way? Um, I don't think so. My youngest, especially when he hit his senior year in high school, um, I'd been very involved as a parent, you know, mm -hmm. in all of their activities, sports, music. Um, with my youngest, he was in. I counted the other day. Throughout the course of his senior year, he was in seven different bands. Wow, that's a lot of concerts. That that's, is. A lot, that's a lot of driving. Um, okay. One of his one of his was a audition only jazz band um, that he was part of, but it was an, an hour and a half away from my house. And See, I, this and is I what drove, I mean. You're constantly I, traveling somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was driving him every week to rehearsals, mm -hmm. and then they would have concerts around the state. Um, so yeah, my travel is a lot local lately. <laughs> Or over the last few years, somebody's like, you're always doing something. Yeah. Um, somebody said you're the busy. Somebody told me at one point before I started editing, you know, all the time and that kind of stuff. So because you are the the um, busiest unemployed person I've ever seen. As I'm employed, I'm employed by my children. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Have you noticed? Yeah. It actually says if you go to my Facebook, it actually says under employment. <laughs> <laughs> Mom of Ben and Roger. No, I mean seriously, <laughs> people don't realize how much. Time. Yeah, people don't realize how much yeah. work that parents, especially stay-at-home parents, mm -hmm. are are constantly on the go. Yeah, like, and, but my my youngest, when we hit high school, we got towards the you know, end of his senior year, and he says to me, he "Goes, Mom, you have to find a life of your own now. You mm -hmm. have you have to do something that's yours, mm -hmm. because because we're not going to be running every week to ten things." You know, so you need you need to find something that's yours. Yeah. And uh, so I don't think they were horribly surprised. Okay. Um, and we had talked, we kind of talked a little bit about it around the house. You know, this is what I'm writing, and I mean, they're typical early twenties kids. You know, they're not super interested in what mom's doing. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, you always get the you know the question: Do your kids read your stuff? No. 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 Not at this age. No. The first might, comic they, I ever created, they my oldest read because he was like, "Oh my god, this is my dad's name." And then mm -hmm. I put him, I put him as the editor in chief, okay, <laughs> on the book. So he was ecstatic about that. Um, but at this point, none of my kids really read my stuff, so yeah. that's fine. I, I figure you know, because these are kids' books and they're perfect for like bedtime reading and that kind of thing. Maybe they'll read their them to like you know to their kids once they get older. Nice. Um, I'm not in a hurry to be a grandparent. <laughs> <laughs> Me not. either. I'm not, and my kids know that. I've made that very clear to them, you know, <laughs> that if you don't finish school, you know. Yeah. I said, the thing is, like, I married their dad when I was 19. Hmm. So okay. I I think I missed out on some stuff. Sure. Because I was busy being, you know, being a wife. And then I had my kids in my early 20s. Okay. You know, and so I just, you know, guys, enjoy college. Enjoy the experience, you know. Getting married and stuff is great. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Having kids is great. But wait, there's not a huge rush. All right. Well, you know, okay. Hold on one second. All Danny right. decided he's going to finally join us. So let's bring Danny's him Danny's going to join on. us. All right. Yeah. What's going on, Danny? 
Hey, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Hey, Danny. All right. So for everybody who wants to know, this is Danny J. Quick. He decided he's able to finally join us. He is. I made it. I got to do this because I've been doing this now every week. I have uh, my intro for you. Across the way is the Mauve Prime Mover of Fourth Wall Productions, Danny J. Quick. <laughs> dude, I'm going to. How many I, different I, ways can you say purple? How many different ways can you just say oh, the purple, dude? There are a There's ton guy of ways. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a thesaurus. He just goes down and looks. I do, actually. <laughs> this, this week is. <laughs> I really. Every week I just think of, all right. Synonyms for purple. The source. Have you have you done have you done plum yet? Yes, that was last week. Yeah, we did plum last, we did plum. Plum last week. <laughs> Trust me, I, I, I've done it. Well, so I mean, now I'm gonna, now I'm going to be pondering purple colors. <laughs> it's actually really weird how many different types of purple. Have you gone like to like it's... Crayola.com and just looked? <laughs> oh, the range of purple. All right, so I know what to do next time. <laughs> but no, no, Danny, thanks for joining us. Um, Kat's been talking about her book, Toy Story, or Return oh, to no, Toy Story. Gonna, Return they're going to they're gonna cease and desist you, not me. I know. I. <laughs> Disney, don't come at me. It's only one letter. It's throwing me off. And Toy Story is such a good movie. It just, That's a good movie, it is. I'm, I'm thinking that the book's just as good as the, as this movie and I would, just, I you know, that would be a pretty pretty big compliment to say, <laughs> you know, your books rank as high as Toy Story. Hey, someday it will be making money like Toy Story does, I'm sure. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'm not going right. to lie, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> well, I guess this, what is, I mean, what is Toy Story completely about? Like, like I can see I, just at the cover, and I've, and I've read some things about it too, but in your own words, what do you say that the Toy Story uh, is about? Tales from the Toy Store and Return to the Toy Store are both standalone books, but they have some characters, that, obviously, that cross over. Um, but hey, if you can get one, why not get two? That's what I would say. <laughs> why not get them both? <laughs> but um, it is each book is 20 plus short stories, uh, perfect for bedtime reading or, you know, your kids elementary school age reading um, all about toys and kind of what they do. Um, think Toy Story. You know, the toys have their own lives. Okay. And in, in the book, um, you know, the, the toys all have their own lives, their own personalities, the things that they like and don't like and what mm -hmm. and uh, some of them have jobs. In the toy store, um, we have a a sock monkey. It's a librarian. Uh, we have the planning bear, who is basically kind of in charge overall. Okay. Um, Horace the tiger is kind of like the welcoming committee and friend to everybody. Um, so they all have their own personalities and all, and what the, and things that they get up to. Now, one of the things I noticed, at least going through my research, um, is that you've written a wide range of books <laughs> yeah. um like you're talking about this is a children's mm -hmm. story and then you've also done more like a, a horrific and adult themes things mm -hmm. why is, how do i phrase it what is the reason that you go from such extremes as far as genre like is there anything that you um, well i think when i first kind of started writing for for fun so to speak um i i was writing more adult things um when it came to like the young adults, uh, horror kind of urban fantasy, urban horror, um, it was a project that I was brought in on um, by somebody who said, You can write, you can write better than you believe you can write. So I'm going to like kind of prove it to you that you can do it. And here's the challenge. Okay. Um, that one actually, I needed my youngest son was doing a science research trip to the Caribbean and we were looking for ways to fundraise. And I had, I asked, um, Ask this person if they would design a t-shirt for me because they have a history and graphic design. And he said, I will if you'll do these books. Wasn't exactly a fair trade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a t-shirt design, it probably took him 20 minutes versus, you know, a few yeah. years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Writers, value yourself is what we're trying to say. Yes, to, you know, but it was a good challenge for me. Um, I remember sitting down that first time with the first book. It was already written. He wanted me to do the editing and then, you know, add anything I felt needed adding or, you know, move it around. And I remember sitting down the first book going, oh, my God, I'm going to mess this up so bad. Like, I just know I'm not ready for this. And turns out I was. <laughs> you know, he, uh, he knew better than I did on this one. Because, um, you, you know, like we all say, you know, you're your own worst enemy. You know, a lot of times what's holding mm -hmm. you back is you. 
-hmm. And that was the case for me. I, I was the one holding myself back. I feel and like then, even as an artist, then, I know that a lot of artists struggle with that. And then also on the writing side, um, I know most writers feel that way too. So definitely know that you are better than what you probably think you are. Right. doesn't mean that you're great, but you're, you're better than what you think you are. And you can always improve. And, and I think I actually, um, with a new book, I've only had one person that's actually read everything in it that I've written so far. And he's actually said, I think this is better than the first one. Nice. And I oh, said, wow. good, because I want to be, you know, improving each time I write a new book. I want it to be better than the last book. Y'all always want to grow, always want to grow. Mm -hmm. I had, I noticed the same thing uh, Kyron was talking about, it, but even within the same, <laughs> uh, I think the one that you did, what was it? The teddy bear, um, a teddy bear tale. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah editor on that series. Oh, so you edited that one. Okay. I that's, did the editing on that one. Yeah. I just I, I remember seeing a, a couple of couple of images on that one and, and one was like a soft, oh, okay, I love this teddy bear. And then the <laughs> like the cover of it was a smoke demon monster with uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's um Awakenings, um which okay, is Okay, yeah. Uh just finally got wrapped up and sent and is back from print, I believe. Nice. So that should be going out to Kickstarter backers who back that. Um and that's uh Veronica Smith is the artist on that one. Yeah, and, I know, her, um, and, and she's an incredibly talented artist. Veronica is really, coloring, coloring my books now, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I'm very familiar with Veronica. Yeah, Ronnie did all of the art for that series, and uh, she's a great fit for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how did you actually get into editing? Since Danny brought up your editing, <laughs> um, accidentally. Okay. <laughs> You'll find in my life I trip into things, <laughs> that I'm doing them. As long as you get back um, up, that's all that matters. About, gosh, it's been eight to ten years ago, I attended C2E2 in Chicago. It's a big comic convention. And uh, was going as a reviewer. So I had a I had a press badge. And it was I just started kind of reviewing comics. And again, I walked in going, nobody's going to hand me their book. You know, I've got no reputation for this. You know, um, I very much underestimated the indie comic community at that point. Because I walked away with this huge stack. <laughs> Thank God I drove. Because if I'd had to fly that stuff back. That would have been really expensive. Um, but one of the people I met there. Was a gentleman named Jared Bagora. Who had wrote a novel. And so he said. I know you're doing comics. But would you review a novel? And I said. Well I, I did book reviews prior to this. So sure. You know. It's right in my wheelhouse. And I did, and I left it, you know, did a pretty, did a review on it, and we kind of became Facebook friends. And a little while later, he posted on Facebook that he was looking for an editor for his next book, because he had done the first one without one. And mm -hmm. through my review and a couple other reviews, realized he needed somebody to go over the book with him. And uh, I was like, yeah, you know, I could probably do that. I've never really done it before, but I could probably do that. Um, I'm pretty good with, you know, grammar and things like that. And he said, what I'm doing is I'm, anybody who's interested, I'm sending out the first chapter, go through it, you know, um, and then, you know, leave your comments, corrections, whatever. And I'll go through all of them after I get them back and hire who I think did the best job. And he came, got back to me about a week later and said, you're in if you want it. He said, you found, th you found things that my prof the professional editors that I had look at it didn't find. Very nice. And I said, okay. And I just kind of started with his books and uh, branched out from there. Okay. And then really? really kind of took off hard once I started working with Russell Nolte. Now, at, this point, at this point, do you prefer writing or editing? Uh, I edit more. <laughs> um, but it, Wait, pays but... The bill. it pays the bills. Um, I love both of them. I really oh, do. Lo I really do love editing. Um, people think that's weird because they hate editing. I always hear the worst part of doing your own, you know, doing your books is the editing process. And I'm like, no, I love looking, but I love editing other people's books. Um, when I have to go back and proofread and go over my own stuff, I'm like, oh, like I agree with you on that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, look, I, I look, I look at it and I go, oh my god, this sucks. <laughs> I'm the worst writer ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like how did this how did this get through when I wrote it? You know, but when I write, I I write fast. Okay. And so sometimes you know a word will get missed or just a t you know I'll forget a comma. 
because I'm just putting it down on paper. Well, sure. On the screen. Um, you know, <laughs> um, I take notes on paper. So um, I have a notebook that I write everything in. Um, I have a list of all the stories for the new book in it that I check mark as I write each one off. Um, but I love both, but I do edit a lot more than I do writing. Mm-hmm. Just time, time wise. Um, but the bonus is because I write short stories. Um, the books don't take as long to produce for me as if I were trying to write a novel. I, I, I've decided after my first attempt at a novel that I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> I'm better in the short story realm. Okay. Well, you know, I think this might be a good time for us. Short stories and put them together into one novel. That's, you know, that's how people are doing (laughs) these things. That is true. People are writing like a chapter or two and then putting it out there and then writing the next couple of chapters, you know, with like Wattpad and Smashwords and various places like that. Yeah. Or even I believe, uh, I believe Amazon has a new um, thing for that too, where you're doing Mm -hmm. a similar kind of thing. I know Amazon just bought out, I think, Comixology. Uh, they've owned Comixology for quite a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. Huh? Um, well, I guess they're integrating they're, it they're, more. They're integrating it into the Amazon KDP system. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm hearing people aren't thrilled with. <laughs> but I've never tried to put a comic on KDP, so I don't know how complicated that is. It's complicated it, as hell. It's it's very complicated, but... Oh. Especially if you're trying to put a physical book on there. It's, like, yeah. near impossible. Digital is a little bit... Even worse, but okay. okay. I mean, I my books, um, the first two books that I wrote are on Amazon, and I did all that. And and Amazon KDP is fairly straightforward for books, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but comics is a whole, yeah, you know, it's a whole other ball game. Yeah. Right. Well, this is going to be our best break here for us to maybe switch gears and do Danny's quick take since Danny's actually here. Ooh. Um, so if you haven't actually listened to the podcast before, Danny's Quick Takes is a sort of rapid fire situation where Danny's going to ask you five questions. Each okay. question is you're going to have 45 seconds to answer. Oh, okay. I'm going to put a clock on. Oh, look at that. There's a timer and everything. Okay. Yes. And... No, no pressure. No pressure, no pressure at all. Um, Deep breath. If after the 45 seconds you haven't answered it, you can't continue, <laughs> and you're going to see Danny's gigantic head pop up on the screen. You're kicked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're no longer part of the podcast at that point. (laughs) Boot you to the back room. Sorry, guys. (laughs) All right. But, Danny, whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right. So He's waking up still. (laughs) Here are my quick takes. Uh, So I'm going to start you off with an easy one. Okay. This is a question. (laughs) This is just a question, a general question, just Mm -hmm. to see what kind of person you are. Okay. So question number one. What's the best season of the year and why? I am a big fan of fall. I mean, not only is it my birthday month, mm-hmm. uh, September is my birthday month, so I, but I um, less allergies, better weather. <laughs> um, less allergies. <laughs> less allergies. I mean, I, I get nailed like in spring and summer. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, um, I like the weather. The weather's a lot better here in Michigan. It's not boiling hot and humid, and it's not freezing cold, and I'm shoveling snow. Mm. Um, good Halloween movies. I, I do a 31 days of Halloween movies every year. Nice. Um, so it's a lot of fun for that. Now I'm just trying to fill the eight seconds. Um, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's eight seconds left. What can I say? Now I'm, now I'm interested in what's your, like, what would be your favorite, what's your favorite Halloween movie? What's your, is it, is it horror movies that you like or mm-hmm. Halloween themed movies? I am a Halloween themed movie person. Okay. Um, I actually have my list up on uh, Facebook right now. It's on Instagram and there's nothing, the scariest movie on there is probably like Coraline or, um, mm. oh, what's the other one with the house that comes to life? It's really scary. <laughs> Um, Monster House. Monster oh, House. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because there's a scary for me. There's definitely it's, it's, it's kind of scary. <laughs> uh, we did a we did our top five horror movies, and I found out quickly there's a there's a huge difference between horror movies and Halloween mm-hmm. movies. That's, that's I I it is I am the I I'm publicly has confessed numerous times I'm the world's biggest chicken. I don't <laughs> like to be scared. Um, yeah. I don't even like things that are super suspenseful. Mm. Um, I, I mean, and I'm talking like Doctor Who level of suspenseful sometimes. 
Mm. I've watched certain episodes where they've been more suspenseful. Where I've actually paused, walked away, and had to come back like five minutes later <laughs> because I need to know what happens. But I don't like the feeling of like the stress of the suspense of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I'm. I I frequently tell people that inside I'm really five. <laughs> I just, I like I'm a five it. five year old in a grown up's body. I don't like to be scared. I feel you. Okay, so let's do uh, question number two. All right. So. This one will be, I think this one will be easy. I think I'll know your answer, but uh, okay. we're going to ask it anyway. Number two. All right. One of these animals inhabits the earth. The other disappears forever. Which do you oh. keep? Cats or penguins? Oh, man. Everybody knows I'm the cat lady. So that's, you know, <laughs> but penguins are cute. I've got penguins in my book. In fact, I have more penguins in my book than cats. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, guys. Uh, um. I, I'm gonna go with cat stay, but man, that's that's a cold one. <laughs> like, that's an easy that's, one. That's that's mean. Like I'm like I don't want to be like the responsible for the death of the penguins. Like who wants that responsibility on their head? So basically, yeah. you hate penguins, is what you're saying? Basically, right, basically, I, basically, I hate penguins. They're all <laughs> horrible, horrible creatures. I know. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be the new headline. Katrina hates penguins. Katrina hates penguins. That's the that's the title of the episode. That's gonna be the new title of the episode. Yeah, <laughs> Katrina hates penguins. News at eleven. I'm writing Ooh. that down right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, uh, I, I did have somebody who uh, t- titled their podcast that I did last week. Um, is it back to the toy store or return to the toy store? <laughs> uh. <laughs> because the book was actually titled originally "Back to the Toy Store." Mm-hmm. And then Eric Cockrell, who's my cover artist, mm-hmm. titled it Return to the Toy Store. Oh. <laughs> the cover said, says no. Return to. Said, we're changing it. I'm changing it. We're just it. changing it. So so if you go to the actual link on Kickstarter, it'll say Back to the Toy Store. Mm-hmm. But then I had to go through and change all the, <laughs> the entire Kickstarter text. So wait, you can <laughs> just have him just change it to Back? I, you know, the thing is I probably could have. And he actually said that to me later. He goes, you know, I could have changed that, right? And I'm like, yeah. Look, yeah. I don't know how I am so graphically challenged. I have no <laughs> graphic skill. I'm like, I don't know if that's a two minute change or a 10 minute hour change. Like, I don't know how long that and he goes, Yeah, that would have been like a 30 second change. Yeah. I'm like, I oh. mean, I could do that for you right now with just the images you probably have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're too late now. We're like eight, yeah, it's, seven it's or eight days now. into the it's Kickstarter now. now. But but yeah, and so but now we joke that Eric just named the next book. Okay. And at least back to the toy store for a future book, if I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. I like that. Um, all right. So, question number three. I know that you're a big fan of indie comics. You support mm-hmm. indie comics, and you, I always see you um, posting and buying indie comics in my in my yeah. research. I'm and, interested um, in want... this question very much, though. Right now, just. <laughs> What was and the last I want indie to know, comic you read. Uh, <laughs> you have one. You have to live in one indie comic universe for the rest of your life. Ooh. Which Holy one do you crow. choose and why? Holy crow. Um, that's a tough one. Better say the right answer. Just uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out on a weird limb here. Um, and go with the floppy cop universe. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't I don't know if you guys are familiar with floppy cop with Dan Dordry. Oh yeah. Um yeah. it's it's a fun book. And I you know, I mean who doesn't want, you know, a good police force backing you, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and you know, you get they have they have fun bad guys, you know. So I, I'll go with Floppy Cop. Um, okay. we had we had um we had Dan on the show, right? It was Dan that that came from not um, from Floppy Cop. For uh, are we talking about Dan Bethel? No, Dan Dotry. No, we haven't had Dan, Dan Dotry. We haven't had him on yet. I, I don't know. I bought his books. I don't know if I. Oh, maybe he was on. Uh, he was on Chat and Draw. That's right. Yeah, he was okay. on Chat and Draw. So you see, this is the problem. You were on way too many podcasts, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> like I think you probably have like two other podcasts. after today, after right now. So I, <laughs> I, I do have two other podcasts today, but I, I've uh, got. I, I can't say I got one more tonight. So yeah. Um. So I I ended up buying all uh the floppy copy the floppy cop books. And uh, I, that's a good, that's a good one. That's a good, uh, that's a good pick right there. It's, it's a fun one. Um, mm-hmm. I actually bought, I think the, I think Dan figured out that I actually own the very first uh, trade for, oh. for the first, for the first oh. run. Nice. Um, I have, I happen to be at a show in Lansing, Michigan. 
uh, that Source Point Press had a table at, mm-hmm. and they had them, and I was like, "Yep, picking that one up." Okay. <laughs> and I posted it to Facebook, and Dan's like, "I don't even have a copy of that yet." Wow. <laughs> I'm like, well, you should talk to your publisher about that. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> I can't fail right there. Get, get something before the creator. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> and uh, then I backed the Kickstarter for the second, the second trade. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So question number four, and this is Kyron's mm-hmm. question. He asked me. Uh-oh. He asked me last. What was it? That's last it. week. Yeah. And I, I still don't have an answer. Oh, for it. So oh no! I think I saw this one pa- posted, and I didn't, and I didn't have an answer either. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, well, I only ask the best questions. This is gonna be forty-five seconds of awkwardness, but okay, <laughs> let's go. You have unlimited money and can choose any one comic to add to your collection. Which comic do you choose, and why? Yeah, see, forty-five seconds of awkwardness. Um. <laughs> I mean, I thought this, I, I went round in my head, like, what would you choose? Um, okay, I don't even know if this exists. It may not even be a thing. But there's, um, I would actually see if there was a trade of, like, the Scooby-Doo comics. Or, like, an omnibus or something like that. I don't think one exists. But if I have all, the, if I have unlimited money, I'll make it exist. Hey. <laughs> I'll pay them to make it for me. They should. I know uh, Scooby. Scooby had a, a couple of comic series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think they. I don't think they have an omnibus, but they could they collect should. all of those stories into one. That would be good. That's a good pick right yep. there. Yeah, I'm a huge Scooby Doo fan. Nice. Who's your favorite okay. Scooby Doo character? Um, being kind of the, the the you know nerdy geek girl kind of thing. I I'm always a big fan of Velma. Yes. Best choice. Velma's. Velma's gaining a lot of popularity on TikTok right now. And is I, she? Okay. Yeah. She's cute. That's why. She's cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, all, right. all right. So last last but not least, here's the, okay. the, the last question. Um, you get one wish to have superpowers. Which Ooh. one do you uh which one do you wish for? And do you become a hero or a villain? Well, I, I have said that if I turn 50 and I'm not remarried and still kind of, you know, live, live in the, the swing and singles life, uh, that I'm going to start a supervillains group at 50. And somebody's <laughs> like, you're a ter- you'd be a terrible supervillain. Um, you just would be so bad at it. And I'm like, well, that's kind of the fun of it, right? Um, but as far as what superpower I would go with, um, probably like healing powers. Okay. Um. I mean, if anybody ever played like EverQuest two with me, I have like mm-hmm. ten healers. That's it. <laughs> all, my, all my characters are healers. I have every class imaginable. Um, and yeah, and you can use that for good or bad. Yeah. So true. maybe so I'll you... be like the the anti hero. I don't even like. So are you? Were you are you healing on, yourself or are you healing other people? Well, it depends on the day and how cranky I am, right? <laughs> Like if I if I didn't get enough sleep, well, it's gonna be all about me that day. That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. You know, if if it's you know, I mean, shorter than there's limitations. Like my kids, and you know, the obvious. You know, okay, mm-hmm. they get they get, you know, free medical treatment, but everybody else, well, I don't know. Did you back the Kickstarter? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in the clear. I'm good then. I can come get some Danny's clear. Danny's like, I'm, I'm good. I'm screwed. Sorry. <laughs> Kyron's like. Shoot. Well, God, thank God for uh, medical insurance. <laughs> that's a, that's, a good, that's a good villain. Uh, a good villain right there. Uh, yeah. I can heal you, but what are you did you do like for me? Kickstarter? What, what did you do for me? Did you, you know? Remember, Kyron, it, every even a dollar helps. That's, that's, that's been my my thing the last few days, guys. Like the dollar train. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even even a dollar helps. You know, it not only boosts the numbers, but it boosts the signal. That's, that's right. true. That is true. That and, is very I mean, that's true. If you got people who follow you on Kickstarter, they don't know how much you pledged for. That's they true. just know that you pledged for this campaign. That's true. Which very may true. get them to look. That is very true. Very true. Very um, true. I, I, I've said, you know, this week, you know, a share is worth its weight in gold. You know, the more eyes, the better the odds. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, that was Danny's quick takes. Brought and I to survived. you. Yes, brought to you by Scooby Doo and the Death to All Penguins. And Death to All Penguins. (laughs) (laughs) 
And now a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. All right. Well, you know, I was thinking about this and I didn't realize this until I just looked back at all of our episodes. Mm -hmm. Kat, you are the first female creator we've had on our show. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I realized I I was wearing pants for a reason and that's why. (laughs) 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 It's too early in the morning to be close. No. Look, I'm not going to lie. I've got my pajama bottoms on. Nice. <laughs> I figure they're seeing me from here up, you know, put on the Spartans t-shirt and, you know. That's the that's the good thing about, you know, uh, like, you know, teleworking now and being able to, you know, have meetings on Zoom and, and on Restream. Mm-hmm. You don't really have to get dressed up if you don't want to. So No, no. You know, and I, and I work as an, I work as a freelance editor, so I work from home. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I joke, I'm like, I said something the other day. I'm like, oh, I got to go put real clothes on. Uh, so he goes, what? So he goes, what do you mean real clothes? I'm like, yeah, like not my pajama bottoms, not yeah. my sweatpants, not, you know, my raggedy shorts that I only wear around the house. Like I got to go put on a pair of jeans or, you know, something that, you know, my grandmother would not be horrified if I went out in public wearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the things I noticed when doing research about you is that you also have Ooh. your own personal website, uh, mm-hmm. Life with Katie. Yep. And you mentioned on their website about all the things, all the products you're working on. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that really caught my eye, and I've noticed it for a while, I shouldn't lie, um, but it's Crock-Pot Mondays. Crock-Pot Monday, yeah. I need to I need to get back on the ball of Crock-Pot Monday. All right. Ooh. Now, explain to our viewers and our listeners what exactly is Crock-Pot Monday. I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory, but... You know, Crock-Pot Monday is that. my... I have a recipe list on Facebook, or not on Facebook, on the website. It could be on Facebook, too. I don't know. You never know with people. They might just have put it out there. Um, it's, it's on my website. Um, every Monday I post a new crock pot recipe and there's a recipe section on the site. So you can go and see all the past recipes listed and all the future ones because I typed up that whole list all at once. Um, I could tell people if you cl- you can't click on it, it's just because I haven't posted it yet. Um, it will be there. Um, but it's, it's broken down into some of our freezer meals. So you can prep everything in advance, throw it in the freezer. Then when you want it, you pull it out, thaw it, and dump it in your crock pot. Um, or, and then they're, other than that, they're broken down to like beef, chicken, pork, desserts, drinks. Um, yeah. The desserts the, is the one that get, that got my interest more than anything. <laughs> you do desserts yeah, in can, a crock pot? Oh, yeah. Do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if you have the right, uh, you can do cheesecakes and crock pots, all sorts of stuff. Oh, wow. That's why I'm fat. I know all about desserts. I know all about the dessert <laughs> section of the menu. I've been That's wasting right. my life apparently because I only do like <laughs> <laughs> we only do like two things in a crock pot, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, there's a, you can do soups and stews, and um, we do like pulled pork tacos. You oh, know, wow. all sorts of stuff. I mean, basically, with a pulled pork taco, all you're doing is throwing your pork roast into the crock pot, letting it cook all day until it gets uh, shreddable, mm. and then you use that to make make tacos with. Um, we do all we've done all sorts of stuff. So now I'm hungry because it's now breakfast hungry. time. Yeah, I had a muffin this morning, so I'm I'm okay at the moment. I had some tea in my amazing uh, Full Metal Alchemist mug. Look, I, I won't tell you what I had with. That. <laughs> so, like I had some Hennessy with that muffin. No, no, <laughs> so, okay, okay. It's a two liter Fanta. Oh snap! Ooh, That's the good yeah. stuff right there. Fanta orange is, is delicious. We went well. I, I was telling Karen earlier. I was at my son's apartment last night, and we ordered pizza, mm-hmm. and uh, we all ordered drinks to go with it. And um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sprecker's. They are. It's a soda company out of Wisconsin. Oh, wait, um, no, I think I've heard that. I've heard that. But one. they have the best orange cream soda. Mm, okay. And so my youngest, my son and I, we both ordered that, and they called us and said they were out. So did we want to substitute something for it? And he said, well. They said, well, we've got two liters of orange soda. He's like, yeah, that's fine. Just do that. Well, they brought, I don't know what, how much these uh, glass bottles of Spreckers were, but they brought us, in exchange for two of those, they brought us three two liters of orange soda. Jeez. Wow. (laughs) So, so of course, you know, being a 20 year old guy with his first apartment, um, they had no clean glasses. (laughs) So I I had to like act like a hobo and drink it directly out of the two liter. (laughs) Then you're not then you're not dirtying up any glasses. Not plates, well, anything he like ran that. the dishwasher while I was there. He's like, I meant to start this earlier before the concert and forgot. So that was just to make you feel better. Yeah, it is. But dishwashers, you know, take a while. So they was, mm-hmm. they're still wearing. 
And then he was like, oh, yeah, we don't have any clean plates either. They're all in the dishwasher. <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> you are such a typical 20-year-old guy. <laughs> like, oh, that's the life right there. It, yeah, it, it, you know, he's having a ball. It's his first apartment. And him and his roommate get along great. So, mm -hmm. yeah. oh. But I don't, but it taught me that I, A, I'm, I've never been cut out for apartment living. And B, not in a college town. <laughs> <laughs> everything it was like 12 30 at night and like you could hear the upstairs neighbors yelling and talking and i was like dude no dude can't do it mm -mm. Mm -mm. yeah i would be that neighbor way. with the broom <laughs> ever, ever since we uh we got our first house i i, I cannot imagine going back to an apartment mm -mm. and um even though i have to go out here and cut this grass every yeah. so often you know i think it's a good trade-off no, yeah, that's why well, you, you have know, kids. You get them to cut the grass. Well, well, that's just it. Is I've got pretty bad grass, like grass seed, and I don't know because grass have pollen, whatever allergies, mm -hmm. and so I can't really mow because I get really sick. Mm -hmm. And so once my kids grow up and they're now out, um, I pay a guy fifty bucks a month to come and mow my lawn. <laughs> like, I, I love it. But he comes in. He does all the all the mowing. They do all the mowing, all the trimming. And uh, I take one page, kind of one project check uh, mm -hmm. once we hit spring and just pay him for like the entire summer and fall. See, like, here you go. Good. I don't have to worry about it. They come I in, love, they I do it. You. And I said, I feel like I'm, you know, you, you hit the big time when you can afford to pay. A lawn guy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have like the cheapest lawn guy in the history of lawn guys. But you know. right. long as long as they come in and get the job done, that's, that's yeah. all you really care about. It gets done. It looks decent, you know, and. It, it shames my neighbors on either side into mowing and <laughs> you know it's, it's good to be that person see i have super villain traits i don't know what people are talking about i could do it, I could do it. Uh, your your super villain power is being the first one to cut the grass that's right <laughs> As she sits out on the porch going like this their fingers just <laughs> yeah. with, a, with a two liter of fanta with a with two, two liter, liter of orange fanta, fanta. That's right. i love it yeah that's great oh um, <laughs> All right, so you and I were talking about this before Danny came on. Is that uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna be watching football for the rest of the weekend? <laughs> well, this my oh, this is gonna be watching football for the rest of the weekend. I'm gonna be, okay. I'll be watching a lot of football. Um, but Russell Nolte also has a kind of a killing it on Kickstarter thing this after that runs this afternoon. Okay. That uh, of course, you know, he puts his book out a week after I go live on Kickstarter. I'm like, I could use all these tips prior. <laughs> I think it's intentional. <laughs> or he could have at least as as his official proofreader, they could have brought it to me so I could have read it in advance, but no. Yeah. Come on, no, Russ. No, 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 no perks here. <laughs> but he's he's doing a, a seminar this afternoon. Nice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to catch that. And then I have a podcast tonight uh with Russell Allen on YouTube um mm -hmm. with a ton of okay. different creators at nine o'clock tonight. Nice. Nice, and nice. I try to squeeze in some work in there somewhere. <laughs> right. Works. And then, then tomorrow I have to do some house cleaning and watch more football. Watching <laughs> football is important. Just so you, know, you need to support the economy by watching football. Um, yeah. Please All watch the. Stuff, you know, don't even worry about it. Just make yeah. sure you get to the football. Yeah. So we might as well get the football stuff in. Maybe, maybe there'll be a replay of of Russell's stuff, and I can just watch football today. There you go. <laughs> You don't need to watch Russell's like, stuff, anyways. Yeah, I know it all, right? We're bl we're blowing through this Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> a girl could dream. We hit three days of stall, and I was like in full panic mode. You know, uh -huh, it it's like that though. It, you know, it happens though. It, it. I was like, we're not even like a whole week through, and we're stalled already. I can't do this. Why am I doing this to myself? Even people like you know, Russ Russ kills it on Kickstarter mm -hmm. religiously, and he even has oh, yeah. days where where it's really dry so you know you just gotta keep yeah. pushing through it and you'll get there to the end well you know we got we got all the instagram i don't know if you guys have caught my instagram posts uh over the last week or so but when i did the apos army it's a book all about cats so i mm -hmm. had like 31 cat photos <laughs> like every day was a new cat photo mm -hmm. with a little tidbit about them and they were actually cats that were in the book um and i didn't know how to do that with toys I was like, I don't have, you know, like 31 pictures of all the toys that are in there. Mm -hmm. So I've actually been, wrote, I've been doing pictures and tying them to 80s music. <laughs> okay. Ah. <laughs> so yesterday we had Toby the Gnome, as, you know, he was a you know, sharp dressed man ready to accept everybody's pledges for the weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we're just, I said, you know, got to have a little bit of fun with it. 
There you go. There's there's Toby. There's Toby the gnome. Oh yeah. 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 Toby. And Mr. Snow Owl here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I like there's this one. A, oh yeah. Yes. This is the goat. Um. He has he has a story about being well the goat. <laughs> And this is the book. If you are not watching live stream, uh, we are. I'm showing the cover. Right? Yep, this is the cover done by Eric Cockrell. And these are all characters that are in the book. Very nice. Um, so, so you have Jack the sock monkey, Blakey the bear, Horses the tiger, Harley is uh, the bunny down there on the left, and then you have two of the three cheetah triplets. Nice. Yep. I like the guys. That that monkey looks very familiar. Oh, I'm I'm probably he. I think he he's a standard sock monkey. Yeah. Um. I think I remember having one of those when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely had one of those before. <laughs> yeah, you guys have seen them. They're they're around. Um, yeah, yeah. So what what is the easiest way to get to your Kickstarter? Uh, the easiest way to get to the Kickstarter is uh, clicking one of the multitude of links on Facebook. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, guys! You know we all post like. We're... I feel like I like I think I post two to three times a day, which is probably not enough. But feels like so much to me. <laughs> like it's just like I try to intermix it with the other things, but it's tough. Um, otherwise, if you go to lifewithkatie.com, uh, I believe the top two posts are about the Kickstarter, and there's a link in both of those. Nice, nice. Yeah. Right. Yep. And we've got a little promo running this weekend that if we hit five hundred dollars by the end of day Monday, um, I'm actually going to throw in a uh, extra um, print for everybody. Oh, oh nice. and if even if you print it, if even if you back at a digital level, I'll just send you. I'll send you the digital image. Okay, that you can then use. And looking at this, you are one hundred and twenty dollars away from hitting that. Yeah, we're we're not. It's not impossible. I mean, I've seen, yeah. I've seen campaigns do one hundred twenty dollars in five minutes. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like you know yeah. we're a little slower, but I totally believe that we can do this. I think uh, Kyron was planning on. Um, Topping that off today, I think. You know, there is. I would say there is a hundred dollar tier. I saw that for a custom story. For a custom Choose story, your favorite yeah. toy and have a custom story written for you. Yeah. Yeah, I did that with Apo's Army, um, and we did three or four of those um, where people would send me a photo of like their cat and just kind of tell me about their personality, and then I would write a story so, um, that then went in the book. I have this. I have this story. I do want to write. Um, it's about the superhero who lives in Las Vegas. And his name is uh, Club. Uh, let me see. Jack of Clubs. And he's all purple. And <laughs> he he goes around. He just fights crime. So I might do that. Just a custom yeah. story of that. Um, maybe. Well, I, I, I got to see if the wife will allow me to do it, though. <laughs> I got to go ahead and I got to go ahead and get my lawyers on retainer. <laughs> <laughs> just be prepared. I need some lawyers somewhere to... <laughs> Uh, well this has been fun cat um besides life with katie where else can we find you on the interweb social media you can find me on twitter at katrina rhodes you can find me on instagram at life with katie uh the website is lifewithkatie.com or i am on facebook katrina rhodes or katrina rhodes dash author for my fan page cool cool all right danny uh, we didn't get to introduce you properly this morning. So where can we find all your work? Social media, yeah, all that me. good stuff. Uh, if you're looking for me, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, uh, and uh, and on our website, fourthwallpros.com. Or you can just search for Ace Blade and you'll find me. Nice. And, of course, you can find me at TaurusComics.com. I am on Instagram and Twitter at TaurusComics. Um, you can find our podcast at 4 Tales Podcast. Dot com. That's the number four, T A L E S podcast.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Twitch, uh, YouTube. Just if you can stream it, we will be there. We are trying to reach a hundred subscribers on YouTube, and we're like almost at 50. I think we're almost at 40 so far. So we're, we're trying to get to that hundred subscriber mark. So please, if you can, search us out on YouTube. It, again, it's the number four, talespodcast.com. Um, help us reach that goal, and uh, Danny will send you a picture of himself dancing. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, please check this out. Like I said earlier, this episode will actually post 
in about an hour or two, along with a new feature if you're using Spotify, where you can answer our poll question for this episode. And since I since Kat is our first female creator, I figured I'm going to do an all-female poll. And this is going to be, if you were fighting aliens, oh. who would you rather have? Metroid's Samus Arnon or Aliens Ellen Ripley? And that's going to be up once... Uh, don't okay you can go on to spotify and answer that when i post it okay (laughs) good luck everyone yeah but until then we Mm -hmm. hope you guys have a great day um thank you again for joining us and please come back next week when we have Mm -hmm. when we will officially have wally mcnair but until then sayonara goodbye and please take care of yourself Music provided by Quick Made It. That's Q-U-I-X-K-M-A-D-I-T. Find them on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter.